Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have a couple of little features to mention this morning. Just an hour ago, the NHC labeled this area in the eastern Gulf of Mexico Invest 96L. And honestly, I'm not too surprised because in the last few hours, low level vorticity or spin has started to develop right here west of Key West uh, near the surface. And it has that look where these thunderstorms start to develop in a little bit more of a congregated manner, wrapping around this little area of low pressure that tries to develop to the southwest and it is getting sheared out of the southwest due to an upper low to its west which I'll show you on the water vapor in a second and uh, it's not expected to significantly develop and I don't think it's going to develop into a tropical depression but it will be moving north towards the Florida panhandle near Apalachicola or around that area during the next couple of days and probably won't be able to do a whole lot underneath the shear that it's under but it is prudent to keep it under watch as it is in proximity to Florida and will be making landfall, bringing some uh, welcomed rains to Florida, continuing to soak them over there and bringing some of that rain farther north, but probably not a significant threat for development. Another area that we're watching is a tropical wave over here embedded in the intertropical convergence zone east of South America here. This has a lot of uh, vorticity both in the low levels up through the mid levels of the atmosphere all the way up through 500 millibars. We can see that on this map over here we can see some of the vorticity with our Gulf of Mexico system, and we can see uh, the wave sitting over here near 50 west longitude as well. This wave will be moving uh, west-northwest, going to be hard-pressed to avoid South America here, probably going to clip at least northern Venezuela or Trinidad. This general area may end up partially over land as it moves across Venezuela and then on into the Caribbean, and we may have to watch it once it gets into the Caribbean here since it's a well-defined system, unsure how much land passage here is going to mess it up, uh, but it will be something that we'll be tracking all the way across here as a defined entity that we may have to monitor as it will have a long way to go. And these tropical waves, once they get further west into the Caribbean in the early part of the season, do have to be watched, especially when they are well defined this far east before getting into the Caribbean. This is the water vapor loop. There's the upper low I mentioned in the northern Gulf of Mexico. This is shearing uh, southwesterly upper winds across this low uh, area of low pressure west of Key West. This is keeping the thunderstorms from congregating directly over the center and is keeping the convection northeast of what low level center is trying to develop. And then there's also this dry tongue of air you can see coming in from the southwest, which is going to be limiting thunderstorm activity on the western and southern sides of any kind of circulation that tries to develop. So as as this area moves northward, I expect it will remain fairly disorganized like this as this upper low is not expected to move very much from this position over the next 36 hours or so. So this system is not expected to significantly develop, but again, it will be bringing some rain and it is worth monitoring since the low level vorticity is starting to increase with the system. Here's our wave. Uh, in a well-ventilated environment for now, we have this upper trough uh, north of Puerto Rico over here, uh, basically a tut-like feature that is uh, ventilating the eastern Caribbean by bringing air out of the atmosphere in the upper levels over here, allowing air pressures to try to lower in this area, and this is moving into a fairly favorable environment right here. As soon as it gets into the central to eastern Caribbean, it'll start to feel some wind shear from this upper trough, which will make it harder for it to develop, but as this trough gets more strung out over here across the central Central Caribbean as forecasted by the models, this may have um, a more opportunity to develop in the Western Caribbean once it gets past that and splits through the trough and ends up on the other side where wind shear will again be lower and conditions aloft will be more conducive for possible mischief, though at this time none of the computer models really want to develop the system a whole lot. They keep it an open wave throughout its whole journey west-northwest into the Caribbean. So it's just something to monitor for now given it's, that it is well defined and we will continue to watch that over the next several days as the MJO pulse remains favorable in this area of the world for activity through at least mid-month, possibly through the 20th. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.